The first AI tool you should know about is Storm. Storm is from Stanford University. Ooh la la, let's see if they can live up to the hype of their own name and branding. So here we've got CoStorm. Get a Wikipedia-like report on your topic with AI. And there's two ways that you engage with this. Essentially, you can have like just a Storm um, answer where the AI does all the work for you. And then you can have CoStorm where you have someone like an expert you in the middle sort of like uh, working alongside the AI. So if we go here, you can see that uh, this is something I've generated before and I put in um, transparent electrode materials. You'll see how I did that in a minute, but I want to show you the pretty impressive results. So this is what happens behind the scenes. You have a material scientist, an electrical engineer, an environmental engineer, and then a basic fact writer that work together. These are different AI agents to create this uh, report. And so here I've got transparent electrode materials. I've got types of transparent electrode materials. It is very, very in depth for the amount of uh, prompting this took. It is incredible. And then down here you can see we get a little structure of everything it included. It's even got like challenges and limitations. It's got current research and innovations. Let's actually click on that. Let's see what that says. So down here you can see also that we've got different um, references where it's gone out to a URL. You can see this is actually a peer-reviewed uh, paper. So we click on that. It takes me to the peer-reviewed paper, which is great because it's not hallucinating. And then we have uh, all of the different sort of like advancements all in different paragraphs. And I really, really like that. You can see it's got some limitations. You know, here it's just using that same reference for all of these. But nonetheless, it is a really great place to start. How do you actually use it? Well, you go up here to new session and then you type in uh, create a new article. And so let's have a look, OPV devices. And then down here you get this annoying box and it's a bit annoying because it's just like extra work, but you should definitely do it. I don't know why I'm so annoyed at it, but it's there. And also we get here, you know, general internet search. It's got a drop down, but don't give me a drop down if I can only select one thing. I guess they're going to include more things in the future, but whatever. And then we've got, uh, okay, a OPV devices uh, intro to peer reviewed uh, paper. That's what I want to write. And then we've got down here Storm, which is completely autonomous, which is the sort of like generation of different AI agents. And then we get CoStorm down here. So I'm going to click on Storm AI Autonomous because uh, I don't want to do any work. I'm lazy. And then we wait. We do the AI waiting game. It says here it may take up to three minutes, and my experience from last time is it was pretty fast. So let's just uh, wait around a little bit. Maybe I'll spin on my chair. Oh, this is interesting. Like you can see that it's going to all of the different uh, peer reviewed publications that it's found online. And it said, finish browsing this, finish browsing this. So it gives me confidence that it's actually finding scientific uh, research that relevant to my topic, not just doing like a general uh, Bing or Google search and then coming up with rubbish. It's using uh, peer reviewed paper, which is just what I would expect from Stanford. Anyway, back to waiting. Meanwhile, here we go, it's spit out this incredible thing here. Organic photovoltaic devices, we've got different references. Um, we've got all of the structure. The structure it does is very, very good. I cannot believe that it's uh, like produced this literature review so easily. Obviously it's the starting point, right? Don't get on me being like, oh, you can't use that as your own work. Yes, we all know that by now. But look, this is done for you. Even just having the headings is an advantage. The fact that it's got references under it that have all of the information. It's not hallucinating. Mwah, I love it. It's completely free to use. Well done, Stanford. You've outdone yourself. I really like this tool. Go check it out for your research field. Mapify, formerly Chatmind, whatever. Um, it's an AI mind map summarizer. So you end up with this, like you put in a PDF and you end up with a mind map. Now it's not free, but there are free limitations that you can take advantage of. So I generated this map here. If we open it up, you can see I put in one of my papers and it gave me this map. So this is the format. This is how you sort of like change the drop down. So let's have a look. I want a actual mind map. And then you can see there I want to fit map to the screen. And this is what you generate from a simple PDF upload is the kind of mind mapping process. This is something that would have taken hours if you do it on your own. But now you've got it here lovely and set up for you can click on things and uh, edit it if you want to add information. But 
Creating a new map is really simple. And even though this isn't free, I think this is super powerful within the free limitations for stuff like a uh, review article where you need to have a look at a big article and break it down into its themes and uh, research groups. So if we go up here to new map, we clip there and then it's like ask anything. So you can type in a research question, PDF doc, you put in long text, you can put in a website, YouTube image, audio. I love that you've got loads of ways of putting in information. For example, you could put in audio of your recent uh, supervisor meeting and it will give you a mind map of what the themes were that you discussed and the outcomes and all of that sort of stuff. So it is sort of like a tool that can go beyond just using it for PDF documents and summarizing things. Nonetheless, I think the most powerful way to use it for academia and research is here. So put in a PDF and document, you click here to upload your file. And then this is the one thing I like about it. We click here for Mapify, and then you'll see it just generate the map in front of your very eyes it, in a minute. It, uh, oh, here we go, it's off. And this is one thing I like. So it's got introduction to transparent electrodes. It's got development of that. It's got flexibility and durability. Oh, look at this, it's bo -bo 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 spitting it out. And I like the fact they've shown it being built because you kind of get like a little bit closer to the stuff it's generating. I don't know why, and no upgrade? No, thank you, we're students, we don't have any money. No, I don't want to invite friends and earn credit. So here you can change the different type of style of the map, um, we'll just stick with that one. And also the type of map. So you can have a mind map, a logic chart, chart, a tree chart, and also a grid. Let's have a look at grid. Nope, don't like that. Tree chart, don't like that. All right, let's just stick with normal mind map. There we are. So this is a place where you can get the outline and um, the uh, key themes of a review paper really simply and easily just by uploading it. And then it just makes your life so much easier. Thank you very much, Mapify, formerly Chatmind. Not sponsored, by the way. None of these are sponsored. The next tool you should know about is Research Flow. Research Flow is this a dive deep into your research. We'll see about that research flow but we've got dive in now let's have a look but this is what happens you put up a pdf um, or it generates a pdf uh, sort of like search for you we'll, we'll look at that in a minute and then you've got this other little like mind map here which i really like so you get uh answers from trusted sources. You can dive deeper by uploading a PDF. All of that is really great, but let's have a little look at what it can actually do for free because that's what I'm really interested in as a student when I'm starting out my research. So once we're all logged in, we've got here research flow, new research. This is something that I had a look at before and you can see here, it's, uh, you know, I asked AI and then it came up with all of this on the question, how does chronic sleep loss affect cognition? And so it's got a PDF it's really awkward to navigate. Can we zoom in? No, that goes up and down. Um, but there we are. You can sort of like zoom in and then use the mouse to kind of drag the page around. But uh, yeah, this is everything that a particular PDF is that it found. And it found this reference here. If we click on that, it opens up the reference and you can see where it is. But we don't put the PDF in necessarily. We can start by going up here to new research and we can go to search and then type the question you wanna ask. This is where you um, can put any research question, it will go away and find a reference. And the good thing is we can click pro here. Pro, we get six searches a day. So you just need to wait 24 hours if you run out. One thing I love about those sort of AI tools is that uh, it has got a really nice sort of like generous free um, service for PhD students and students because you know, we don't have much money, do we, when we're students? So type the question question you want to ask. I want to ask about beards. Mm. What beards are most attractive? And if it doesn't say Andy Stapleton's, then we will never, ever believe it, will we? So what beards are most attractive? And it says AI is writing. We've got all of this. What does this one mean? Add a little like node. And then we've got copy the full text, all sorts. So AI is writing. Let's have a little bit of a wait. We'll do the AI writing. Uh, we'll do the AI waiting game. Then we got here, attractive beard style, short stubble full beard. Oh, I've got a full beard. Short beard. Factors influencing beard attractiveness. We like that. Then grooming and maintenance. There we are. So you can see it's generating a mind map from a simple prompt. It's not like Mapify where you need to go find the information yourself. It's found the information and we're using Pro. So we're using up a few more of our credits for the day. But I have found with Pro that it works much, much better. So go check it out for your research field. Go check out Research Flow. The last tool you need to know about is Archive Pulse. And here it says stay informed on the latest research without feeling overwhelmed. 
so there's lots of stuff on archive for particular research fields but the problem is you know sometimes we're just overwhelmed there's so much going on out there but here this is what uh, you end up with is a nice digest of archived papers or papers from archive um, and a nice a sort of like a AI generated summary. Uh, there are some limitations with this and I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about this first. First of all, is it's really expensive, $15 a month. So if you can get your PhD supervisor or your university to pay for this, even better. I think this is too expensive for the average student, but nonetheless, this is what you can do once you're in. So you can try it out and then I've signed in before. So this is what happens is you get your pulses then you got your digest archive. So here you click create new, create new, and then you enter your topic and you put in a keyword. Then you choose your um, category and then you choose a subcategory and then you choose how often you want it. So super simple, you know, not much information you need to put in there. But my pulses, this is one that I did from transparent electrode materials. And uh, you can see that it's in physics, material science, and the frequency every five days last sent at this time. So let's see what that actually looked like. There we are, so now this is what it looks like in my Gmail. So here we've got, hi Andy, hello. In this newsletter, we'll delve into, the, yeah, it's quite wordy. That's the second thing I want you to know about this, is it's very, very wordy, but nonetheless, it is kind of a nice uh, summary without having to go read all of the papers. The fact it sort of like puts it together for you, great, but to the developers, just make it a little bit more sort of like summary-wise, less sort of like dense text, and I think it could be a little bit better. Um, here we've got transparent transparent electrode materials, so advancements, blah, 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 and it gives you highly transparent this. It tells you the link to the paper, and then it gives you a, an AI summary. I feel like, like I said, that could be a little bit more concise. And then we've got the conclusion, and uh, essentially a too long didn't read. Actually, yeah, that's what I'd like. I'd like a too long didn't read in here. That's what I really want. Nonetheless, that is what it looks like. So archive polls, if the cost comes down, or they give a sort of like an, a generous free offer, or you can get your university to pay for it, great. And I think once they sort of like start refining how people want to interact with this, it could get better. So put it on your watch list for the moment. Those are the tools. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about important AI tool rules that you should know about. If you're using AI tools for research, you should know about them. Go check it out.